Hello, and welcome to Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. And if you've been with me since January of 2023, you will know that Embracing the Fight is about normalizing the conversations surrounding physical and mental health issues and concerns. So why did I start this, this podcast? Why did I start this channel? Mainly because people don't want to talk about, well, openly talk about, you know, their issues and challenges as they go through life. Uh, people tend to allow themselves to suffer in silence. They allow life to just overtake them and all the while they're suffering, there's someone else out there that's made it through to the other side with whatever it is they're dealing with. So in my case, I am currently battling thyroid cancer and I feel like, you know, I am kicking thyroid cancer's tail, to be honest, because as of late, you know, I, I feel a whole lot more like myself. And I share that because there's a group on Facebook called uh, thyca.org where people come on and they talk about different things that they're dealing with with thyroid cancer. And I'm not, you know, comparing myself to them, but some of the stories I read, you know, I'm thankful that I'm not dealing, you know, with those issues. But at the same time, I pray for those people to get to a point where they feel like I feel at least where, you know, they can get up in the morning and, and they can do, you know, regular tasks and things without the brain fog, without being tired, uh, without feeling like extremely fatigued in general. So I said all that, you know, to say this, I know that there are so many people out there that are dealing with things that you know, they're, they're suffering, suffering in silence or they are just telling, you know, a few people about what they're dealing with and your story, your testimony can actually help you heal and it can help others heal as you go through it. So if you are interested in sharing your story on Embracing the Fight, please send me an email to operations at diversity designed.com that's operations at diversity designed.com and i'm also i'm on facebook at embracing the fight i have a page and a group if you'd like to join i would love to have you um uh, i also have tiktok instagram and YouTube. All of it is Embracing the Fight. Now, the one on Instagram is Embracing the Fight underscore because somebody beat me to the Embracing the Fight. They're not doing anything with it. So I'm Embracing the Fight underscore on Instagram. So let's just jump into uh, today's episode. Episode 82, Life's Changes. So sure, you know, Things happen to folks, you know, every day and people handle things, you know, differently. So let's let's just look at some life changes that, that we go through that people don't necessarily realize the impact that it has from person to person. For instance, think of a married couple. Um, they've been married, what, five, six years and say they don't have any kids. And then all of a sudden they have a child. So that changes the whole dynamic of the family. It comes to a point where, you know, possibly the mother is spending a lot of time, you know, nurturing the child, which, you know, is necessary, especially for a little newborn baby. And the husband feels neglected. Well, what does he do when he feels neglected? Does he communicate or does he go outside and seek someone else to communicate with? And if that happens, you all know it starts with, you know, just one word, just two words. Um, it, it takes nothing sometimes to break up a home when there's a lack of communication due to a life change. And what about those parents that have children that they've had at home with them, you know, for many, many years? And it's time for that, you know, child to to leave in the nest, you know, go to college or go to the military or start a business, you know, move out, you know, do something different. So those parents become empty nesters at this point. What if they don't like each other anymore? What if they stayed together, you know, just because of the child? Now that the child's out, there are going to be some serious life changes that are coming their way. Either they're going to decide to stay together because, you know, it's it's more um, 
financially stable if they do that. And they just don't want to, you know, disrupt the norm because even though they might not like them, they know that the person is there for them because they've been there, you know, or they might just divorce. And then if they ain't been together 25 years or more and they divorce, then you got to separate all this stuff. And in comes a new normal. And that's a life change. That's something that, you know, a lot of people don't expect. Most folks after you know, so many years you expect to spend the rest of life with a person or the person that you chose or that chose you. And the only time that you think they'll potentially leave is through death or some extreme sickness that puts them in a vegetative state. Those are the, you know, only two ways that you really think, okay, this person is not going to be my person, you know, because we honored our vows because death do it part. But in the event that that didn't happen and 25 years later, you're looking at a stranger, what does that life change look like? All right. What about those folks that have worked many, many, many years in one company or one industry and people walk into them one day and say, hey, you know, this is it. This is your last day here. Um, here's a box for your personal belonging. Good luck. How does that feel when a person comes into you with that callous, nonchalant, you know, behavior, feeling, thought, and say this person, you know, has dedicated their life, you know, to this job. Now, think about it like this. You can dedicate, you know, your life to something. You could be loyal to a job. You know, I'm not saying that that is wrong, but I want you to understand that you're not irreplaceable when it comes to a job. You're irreplaceable when it comes to your family and to the people that love you. So you have to choose the things that are geared more towards that and not necessarily towards work. Now, of course, you're supposed to go to work, you're supposed to do everything, you know, that they ask you to do. And you're supposed to, you know, work as if you're working on Don and not as if you're working on man. Because I've found, you know, in places that I've worked at times that I am self-directed, self-driven. I'm an autonomous worker because a lot of people don't understand, you know, how I do what I do or exactly what it is that I do. I even had to make a list at work one time to tell them, these are the things that I do. And what I did from that list is I trained the people around me to make sure that, hey, if one day I'm not here, business goes on, you know, like normal. And that's what leaders do, right? You don't want someone that's working for you that's hoarding, you know, everything. Because what happens if they say die or something? Or they just get fed up one day and walk out. Then they won't be just experiencing life change. Everyone around them in that business will also be feeling, you know, that life change. But what does it feel like to wake up and not have to go into that place of business? What does that feel like? Like, how do you organize your day? What, what is it, you know, that you do? We're going to talk about, you know, all of that. All right, so... Another life change that a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily, you know, think about or consider is say you had a major illness. For instance, say you had some form, you know, of kidney failure and you're on dialysis and now you've received a new kidney. So at this point, you don't need caregiving anymore. You don't need anyone, you know, that is with you, around you all the time, you know, that's loving you, not necessarily a caregiver, but I'm saying, you know, your family, when you've had, you know, kidney failure and you are dealing with dialysis, they're constantly, you know, with you and taking care of you and helping and assisting. Now, your caregiver may be a little bit different, you know, doing the dialysis, administering, you know, medication and things like that. I'm saying those folks that were constantly watching over you that we're saying, you know what, I need you to live. I love you. Okay. You got those folks. So now you're healed. You're well. Your life is changing. You, you're not getting full disability anymore. You actually have to get back into the workforce, into the stress, you know, of life. You have to see, you know, what it was like, you know, before, you know, you had this issue. 
And now, do you think the people who were spending so much time, investing so much time in you, they're going to feel a little different? You know, things are going to change for them too. The way that you move around each other is going to change and that could change your relationship. I've known people to go through major illnesses like that, have someone who cared for them. And soon as they got well, they broke up with the person that was taking care of them. And I mean, sure, people break up for whatever reason, but that seems like it's very odd to me that someone would dedicate their life to helping you get better. And then you get well. And the first thing you look at is the door. Like, who does that? What type of person does that? Sure, if you had issues with them while you were sick, you could have left then. But because you were selfish and you wanted to use them to help you get better, regardless of how you felt about them, you were selfish because you might have hated everything they were doing. You were selfish because you didn't want to be by yourself. But once you got well, you left them to pick up the pieces. That, that's just horrible. All right. So other life changes that you have to think about. Think about people who have been like overweight all their life. And all of a sudden, you know, they lose a bunch of weight. They look different. They feel, you know, different. And they start acting different. You know how some people have that one, you know, we'll just call them a fluffy friend that's always happy, always kind, always doing all these things. But they took on that personality because they didn't have the body or the looks of their friend because they felt they had to go above and beyond to be what society thinks you should be if you're overweight. And then they lose weight. And then their personality totally shifts and their friends don't like them anymore. But the friends don't realize that they were actually treating them worse when they were overweight because they just felt, you know, they could say whatever to them because they were overweight. And now that they're beyond that, they're letting you know how they really felt based off of how you treated them then. So it's like, that's a life change for those friends and for the person that lost weight. So how should you handle life's changes? For me, as I travel through this new normal in my life, I have been waking up each morning and I have just been talking to God nonstop. Now, <laughs> he's probably like, you again? But even if he's like, you again, I know that he loves me and I know that he wants to hear from me and I know that he cares for me. And I, you know, I just I feel great. Actually, I feel amazing. My body, like I said, my body is just, I don't know. I, I really can't even describe it. And then I've seen, you know, some people out lately and they just walk up to me and they're, oh, you're just glowing. I don't know these people now. It's not folks that I knew that thought I looked gloomy or something before, but now these are just random folks that are walking up to me, telling me that I'm glowing, that God's in my life and all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay, you know, thank you. And, and I, <laughs> I've been going about my business because I know, like I said, as I navigate this life change, that I am going to look different. I am going to feel different. I am going to move differently you can't expect to go through a life change and remain the same so spend your time you know making yourself better as you go through a life change talk to god like i said read some uh self-help books go to therapy go for a walk do something that you didn't have the opportunity to do when you were stuck in whatever it is you were stuck in now that you're out of it, it's like you're free. I understand, especially the, the life change where you no longer work at a particular place. I understand. Like you wake up and you're like, you know, what, is, <laughs> what should I do? You know, you're sitting there saying, what should I get up and do? Do whatever your heart desires. Start that business. Go visit the people that you wanted to see that you haven't seen because you've been working so much. Go get some self-care, get a massage, get a facial, spend some time with your friends, with the people that you love. Do all the things that you were being held back from doing because you were trying to be a good employee. You were trying to work hard. And they just walked in there and said, that's it. Nice. Wait a minute. 
They didn't even say nice knowing you. They didn't even say, you know, anything positive. They, oh, well, this is the end of the line for you. Thank you. And that's it. I don't even know. Do they even say thank you? They probably don't say thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some folks probably had some of the sweetest uh, managers that probably had glowing words and great things to say to them, while others just, you know, just got, I don't know, just pushed out. Just nasty, negative for no reason at all. Because sometimes people cannot handle intelligence. They cannot handle strength. They cannot handle being questioned. Or they cannot handle being proven wrong. And if that's where you were, you didn't need to be there anyway. Be glad that, you know, God allowed you to be removed from there. He was protecting you from danger seen and unseen. So when you pray that prayer, just know that that's included in it. You know, you say, Father, please protect me from danger seen and unseen. That's not just from accidents and calamities. That's from people trying to do things to you from behind the scenes that you have no idea that it's coming, but they feel like when they do these things to you, that it's going to catch you by surprise, that it's going to break up your world, that it's going to tear your life up. But guess what? God said, no, not so. Mm -mm. So you have to trust him. You have to trust the process. So that's, you know, that's the main one. When you go through life changes, seek God. Seek some type of help, some word from him. The next, communicate with the people around you that are involved with or experiencing the life change alongside you. You know, like the parents who have the, the child that's leaving, they're going to be empty nesters, or the person that was sick and they're no longer sick, or, you know, the just, just the people in general that... If you just said something to them, you could sit down and make up a plan rather than sit there side-eyeing them and resenting them when they have no idea that you feel the way that you feel. Sometimes when there's a lack of communication in a relationship and one person's feeling some type of way, the other person that is being looked at as being the one who's in the wrong that person might have no idea what's going on. They just trying to do the best that they can to survive. Let's think about that young mother with that little baby. She could be going through postpartum depression and doesn't even know that she's pushing, you know, her husband away. She just knows that she's got this little life, this little life that's counting on her. And she knows her husband's going to work. And she knows he's taking care of these things. And she knows the household is going like it should. She's feeling inadequate. She's tired. She's hungry. She's all these different things. She's emotional. And she's struggling. And she can't understand why the man she loves is going further and further away when all we got to do is talk. Sometimes we have to give each other the opportunity, you know, to, to be open and honest and to speak and walk through these life changes. Because with God and with communication, a lot of those other things that, you know, people tell you you need to do, like, oh, you need to uh, get a certification. Oh, you need to, you know, uh, spend some time um, doing reflections or you need to read a book. You need to do it. Mm -mm. If you got God and you're communicating with the affected parties, then a lot of these life changes are going along a whole lot smoother than having to jump into all these courses and all these other things because it's human nature to want to talk, to want to open up, to want to be accepted or at least spoken to by the person you love and not to hear it, you know, from someone else because you're going to feel like, you know, they are pointing all the fingers at you for being wrong, like if you're in a counseling session or something, I understand counselors are great, but I'm saying sometimes when you get in a counseling session and all you hear is all the stuff you did wrong, wah, 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 and there's nothing about what's going on over here or what caused it, and you're imploding over here, but if you too were just sit down and talk, then you wouldn't have to have that feeling because if someone truly loves you, you can be open and honest with them 
without them treating you like you're the bad guy or the bad girl. Communication, open communication, that is, allows for a lot of the animosity and anger to not be there. Especially when you have God there and you believe in him and you trust him and you ask him to lead your path and guide you during this process, then, you know, the healing can begin. And that life change, it'll just be the next stage. It won't be a pitfall. It won't even be a stepping stone. It'll just be the next stage of growth. It'll be the next point in life that you're conquering, it is going to, it, it may even be the greatest thing that ever happens in your life. Everything that happens to you, like when you lose a job or you go through a divorce or you lose a child or um, you lose a parent or you lose a friend or you lose, you know, all your money. Sometimes those things are the doorways to the greatest blessing that's waiting on the other side. But the only reason you can't open that door is because you're holding on to all this stuff. You're holding on to all this hurt. You're holding on to all this pain. And you're holding on to all this negativity. But you need to let it go. You got to make room for the good stuff that this life change may be bringing you. So I thank you for taking a moment out of your busy day to listen to this episode, episode 82, Life Changes. I want you all to have an absolutely amazing day.